What's happening YouTube? Fighting Cowboy here and today I'm bringing you another Invincible video. This time around we're going to be taking a look at Master G. Now, a lot of people think this guy's really hard. Personally, I think he's the easiest out of the three. And I'm going to be showing you a quick strategy that, in my opinion at least, is, you know, it's universal. You can use it between any character. And I find this is the most effective way to get this guy down. So, let me start off by saying this doesn't involve the conference call or the B or the baby maker reload combo. You know, there's no fucking tricky little gimmicks here. All this is is, you know, some good strategy. And like I said, you can use this with any character. So, with that being said, let's jump right into it. For the fight in particular, I'm going to be using my Gunzerker. Personally, I find he's the best suited class for this fight. You can do it with anybody, but the Gunzerker just has so much healing that I think it makes him last very long. And, you know, it just it makes the fight pretty easy in my opinion. But, um, that being said, we're going to be going down Brawn. I'm going to give you a quick overview of the build. Basically, we're picking up hard to kill and in sight. I mean, more health and health regen, and then movement. It's going to keep us moving around the map, going to keep us alive. No downside. Um, asbestos isn't as necessary for this fight, just because, you know, if we get hit with one of those corrosion stacks, you can't reduce that damage. It's, you know, until G's dead, that stack will stay on you. So, asbestos isn't going to help us all that much there. Um, as for I'm the Juggernaut, in a similar fashion, we're not going to be really killing these worms fast enough to make I'm the Juggernaut viable since it only stays up for a few seconds. Moving down from there, we have Fistful of Hurt, and this is really the core build, or the core skill you need for this fight. And the reason for this is, since this fight is largely about positioning, Fistful of Hurt is really going to help with you getting G right where you need him, and by that I mean into those asset pools. Now, you can do this with um, Convergence on Phase Lock with the Siren. Basically, you know, Phase Lock a Worm right before it dies in order to yank him over. You could use the Deception Clone with Zero or the Turret with the Commando. And those will both taunt G over to the appropriate spot. Or, alter alternatively, you could always just go with a Singularity Grenade. And that's like, you know, the universal get somebody where you need him to be weapon. So, like I said, plenty of different options. I find Fistful of Hurt is an excellent one to get the job done, which is why I'm going with it. Uh, on from there, ain't got time to bleed, more health regen, no downside, and out of bubble gum since our shields are going to be going down a lot. Might as well get some fire rate out of it, right? But just got real, because we have so much health regen, we're not going to be using this just because, like, since it says, you know, the lower your health, the greater the damage bonus, well, we're basically going to be trying to keep our health full for the majority of the fight. So, aside from that, bus can slow down, not really needed for this. Sexual Tyrannosaurus, great skill to have, you know, extra health regen, helps great in an invincible fight. And then, of course, come at me, bro, for a full heal while we're gunzerking if we need it. On from there, picked up Filled to the Brim, and this is, I mean, this is an awesome skill to have regardless, but especially when you're fighting the invincible bosses, this is something you want to have, just because having that extra ammo capacity, you know, carrying a couple extra rockets, that's really going to help a lot in these types of fights. Um, from there, last longer, you know, 15 second longer in gun zerking, no downside. Steady as she goes, great skill to have for this fight because we really need to get those worms down fast and that's going to help us with the accuracy and the recoil reduction. I'm ready already, of course, like I said, gun zerking is going to be vital to this fight is it's going to, you know, give us a 50% health or 50% heal every time we pop it and then on top of that we can use come at me bro while we're in it for a full heal, so this is a great skill to have for it. And then of course, double your fun, I mean, might as well, you know, two grenades instead of one. There's no downside. For the last two points, of course, dropped him over into Gunlust with Locked and Loaded and Quick Draw just to pick up that six-point spread in each from the Legendary Class mod. So to give you a look at the uh, gear I'm going to be wearing, um, first off, I got a Norfleet. Now, you don't need a Norfleet, but personally, I, I always have a Norfleet on me. I feel like if I'm ever in a situation where I go down and I need to get up, if there's one weapon that I can count on to get the job done, it's going to be the Norfleet. I mean, this thing does retarded amounts of damage and it just it murders shit i mean there's nothing else you can say about it it's an awesome rocket launcher but down from there um i tried a couple different things out to see what i thought was the best combo and one thing that was universal was the moxie weapons and um basically with all the mad moxie weapons whenever you do elemental dam damage with them they're going to give you a um they basically heal you they do like a life on hit type deal so, you know, the Kitten, the Slow Hand, um, Miss Moxie's Good Touch, the Heartbreaker, all those guns, they will be able to heal you from the elemental damage you do. So I had tried pairing up the uh, Slaga with the Slow Hand, and that was pretty effective, but I'm actually going to be trying something new this time around. I'm curious if I can just slag them up and then go straight into the Slow Hand and the Kitten to see if I can burn these worms down a little bit quicker. 
So it should be interesting to see. Um, as for the shield, I'm going to actually be switching up to my other punchy. And um, you don't necessarily need corrosion immunity, but from the couple runs I did before this, what I found was that even though it doesn't help against the overall corrosion, the corrosion immunity is going to help if you happen to get hit by the worms that are spitting the acid balls at you. So because of that, we're going to try out the uh, corrosion immunity this time around with the punchy. See if that benefits us at all. But obviously, legendary class mod, um, vitality relic is pretty nice for that extra ma or extra max health you're going to get. And previously, I would have suggested running blood of the seraphs, but with the most recent patch, it seems that this relic is now static at 25% health and 0.3 health regen. Honestly, 0.3 health regen isn't really anything. That's like next to nothing. So, yeah, definitely going with 50% health over that. And then of course the singularity grenade. Now, for the Singularity Grenade, ideally, you're going to want to try to get either a Longbow or a Lobbed. Um, those are the two you want, just because they're going to give you the best chance at positioning the grenade properly. If you have Homing, for example, there's a chance that it might go to a different worm than the one you're about to kill, or if the worm's already dead, well, then it's not going to go where you need it at all. So because of that, Longbow is the best, in my opinion, because you can throw it exactly where you need it and make sure you get G to, you know, yank them on over to where you want them to go. So, that being said, let's fucking kick this fight off. Reload our Slaga. And our health will go up just fine. Actually, I'm going to reload all my guns. I've been doing this fight a couple times today. Trying to keep trying to figure out what I felt was the best combo all around for making sure this asshole dies. So... Let's shoot him and kick it off. Like I said, this fight's just survivability and positioning. Like, in terms of killing, um, even after the shield's down, you won't do that much damage to G. So, you really just need to be focused on killing the worms. And doing that, I think we can get the job done. So, let's see how effective both of these bitches are when comboed at killing this worm. Die, yatch. Get him slagged up again. Hmm, it's hard to say. I think it was working better with the Slaga. Oh boy. Got too close. That's one thing you gotta be careful with the slow hand is it the splash damage it does, you can die from it if you're not too careful. Well, looks like we got our first worm down. G's already standing right near it, so nice. He just picked it on up for us. Good job, G. Work this next worm on down. Like, look at this thing. I mean, God, I love the Slaga so much. Look at this. It's just like, ah, die, biatch. Thing just fucking spits out bullets. And with the slow hand, make sure you're shooting it near the base of the worm, because because it's like a parabola type shot. I find that it does tend to like go through them. So I think the most effective way for using this weapon, at least, is to aim it like right down at the base of the worm. We're gonna try and throw these uh, singularities out ahead of time, slag the worm up, and we'll just punch G over to it when the time comes, if he doesn't get it. We got worm number two down. If he doesn't pick it up, you just punch him in the dick, and then he picks it up. So let's get our next worm down, and we're not really going to use the Norfleet unless we go down. That's the whole reason we have this baby around. Just because if you're in a situation where you need to get back up, the Norfleet will We'll always get that accomplished for you. But I actually think I might have been better off using the Slaga and Slow Hand. I mean, if nothing else, having the Slow Hand and the Ferocious Kitten out at the same time is giving us a ton of health regen. As we can see, we already got three Worms up. It's more than I'd prefer to have around. Definitely feeling the Corrosion, uh, the Corrosive Immunity Shield is definitely helping with these, the globs these fucking Worms are spitting at us. But we're gonna... We gotta, we gotta work this worm down real quick here. You can see between using two moxie guns, like look at that health regen, that's fucking ridiculous. Die, sandworm, die. Alright. G didn't pick it up, punch him in the dick. And he picked it up. And you can really see how effective the fistful of hurt dick punch works. It's Always gets the job done. Let's get this next sandworm down and get him another stack. 
And I do feel like they, they changed the dynamic of this fight. So I feel like the same, I mean, I don't know. Previously, I used to do it with the bee, so maybe it's just that it takes longer to kill the worms now, but I feel like these worms are spawning a lot more frequently than they used to. And I feel like G actually has a lot less health than he used to as well, because he's burning down real quick. But regardless, let's keep on working these worms. Like I said, all about the positioning. We're going to just keep juking back and forth, dodge those poison balls. Even though we got the corrosive immunity on, we still don't want to take the direct hit from them. Work this next sandworm on down. You need to die, asshole. Like, just look at that health regen we're getting. This is ridiculous. I mean, gun zerking and everything else. So we're going to toss a quick singularity here because G is not really in a nice position for it. He didn't pick it up. Go, go, dick punch. Did the dick punch get him? Did he take it? He hasn't. There we go. He took it. Good boy, G. Good boy. Like I said, you, as you can see, you can do this strategy with any class. I mean, obviously, being able to gun Zerk, we're killing these worms a little bit faster, but, you know, with the Siren, you're going to have that extra fucking elemental damage to burn them down. And, you know, Zero, you could probably one-shot these things with a, the right melee build or just snipe them in the mouth. I haven't tried the Mechromancer on this fight, but I'm sure she has goodies too that would work. But we're going to wait until our health gets up a pinch here before we kill this worm. Don't really want to go... Oh, thank you. God, look at this. This is this is beautiful. He is just picking these things up. Alright, you're kind of low. I think you are in the mood to die, Mr. Worm. Let's slag it on up. Let's slag you on up. I'm going to need you to die right here. I'm sorry if you don't want to do that. And we can see Gun Zerking. You start come at me, bro. Full heal. Kill this sandworm real quick. Punch G back into it. And yeah, he's like on top of us. I do not like the positioning of this at all, but we got to get this fucking worm down. And we can see he's way over there. This is where our singularity is really going to come in. We managed to pull him right over to it. Don't know how he hasn't picked that guy. He did pick it up. And we're actually gonna we're gonna work our way over to the other side of the map real quick. Cause there are too many of these damn sandworms. I'm getting backed into a corner. Last thing I want to be is caught between like eight fucking sandworms and Master G. It just doesn't seem like a good situation. And uh, another big thing to consider for this fight is your health. Basically, each time that you go down, your health will be progressively less. So like right now we're at seventy thousand, but if I were to go down a couple times, I mean, it'll get down to, you know, 50, 40, it'll get real low, so. <clears throat> I would definitely suggest the Corrosive Immunity Shield, just because without it, um, these little acid globs these guys are shooting out hit you. Those will just work your health down. Yeah, look at all the fucking fire damage, it's kind of ridiculous. Die, bitches. There's a sandworm right in the middle that's getting low. I don't really like killing the ones in the middle just because G is not really a fan of going into the middle of a bunch of sandworms. I think it's this one right here. Oh yeah, now it's really bad. As you can see, it's like surrounded. So we're gonna, yeah, so we're gonna run on over here, try and uh, try and force these sandworms to to spread out a little bit, get that low one to pop up. I mean, technically, you could just run around the map for like 10 minutes until G bleeds out. But that'd be kind of silly. There's our low one. Perfect. It's by himself, kind of. Come on this way, G. Come on. I need to introduce you to my friend called uh, Pool of Acid. Oh, boy. We're down. Oh, no. Ah, uh, just kidding. This worm's about to die. There's no way. No way we're not getting up. But as you can see, since we went down, our health isn't what it used to be now. We're only up to 60,000. Let's dick punch him back into that acid pool before it spreads. Man, he was taking a while to pick that one up. You can see now we're down to 63.5, so... Oh, shit. I did not want to use the Norfleet. <laughs> we put that away. Need to save that ammunition in the event that I go down. I'm going to try out the, the Sligo with it again see if this is working better. Yeah, and you can see they definitely changed this fight. Because I do not remember it ever being where there was like a fucking circus of sandworms attacking me at the same time. Uh, we're going to keep working these assholes down. Let's get that one. That one looks kind of low. Let's get him down and see if we can get G to 
mosey on through this giant pile of sandworms that we're dodging spitballs from. Like I said, G really doesn't like being around all the sandworms. So he'll, he'll try and work his way around. So technically, you could just jump back and forth like this, and he'll probably never come towards you. But I don't think he'll actually go around there. So we're gonna we're gonna make these sandworms move again. Try and get one of the ones on the edge here. It's probably gonna be our best bet to get G down. Who looks low? You're not low at all, but we're going to kill you anyway. Almost thinking about just pulling out the Norfleet and killing like four of them. Seeing if I can get enough damage over time stacks on G to like instant kill him. Come on, Sam Wormy, die. Damn it. See, that's the one problem if you're not... Like, with the B, it was easy enough because you could burn through these worms in like half a second, but without the B, it's the one thing about this fight is these fucking worms, they start piling up. And it's a pain in the ass trying to get G on the worms. But better safe than sorry, right? Might make the video a pinch longer, but I'd rather kite around properly and make sure I get these worms dead than wind up on the ground because I wanted to kill them all at the same time. So we need to get G to come over to us here because we're about to kill this worm. Let's use our, our health. Throw a quick singularity grenade to yank him on over to it. So we can see it doesn't quite work all that well when there's worms around him, so let's give him the good old dick punch. Dick punch. Is he gonna get it? Is he gonna pick it up? Really, he's not gonna pick it up where he's at. Come on. Are you kidding me? All right, well, this isn't good. Because we need him on that fucking corrosive cloud. Pick it up. What is he doing? He's being a real asshole. There we go. He got it. Jesus Christ. Only took him fucking forever. Oh, man. You can see right there just a couple bullets out. Actually, we need to move because G is stuck in all those worms, I think. So let's get some of those worms to jump back underground. Oh, look at that. He's low enough that the bubble's up. So basically when the bubble comes up, um, standing in the bubble gives you a massive amount of health regen. So we're going to try and cut our way back over there. I mean, we don't need the health regen right now. Um, I think it's enough to counteract the effect of if you have to pick up a corrosive, but just to show you here, you can see how health regen really fucking ramped up there. Even with it, though, it's not enough to, like, tank direct hits from the worms, so... Don't get too uh, too antsy with it. But let's see, we're going to try and get this guy down right here. Where'd that worm go? Submerged little bitch. Where's G at? And the health thingy, even if he's in the purple bubble, it won't help him, so don't worry about that. G's still going to be dying. Where'd that one sandworm go? There's the low one. Right in the middle of like five of them. Oh, we're just going to work our way around here. We'll get, like I said before, if you ever get into a situation where there's like 10 fucking worms, it's better to just run a little bit because you're not going to really be able to get G to go into the middle of all those worms. So we'll just run around the outskirts. You can see they're starting to despawn. And they'll pop back up, obviously, but we want them spread out a little bit. So this one right here, if we can get G to come up, it looks like he's coming nice and close to it for us. Yeah, he is right where we want him. We can do a quick dick punch here to put him back into that worm. Got him right where we want him on it. Pick up that corrosive. Pick it up. He picked it up. Excellent. And I think we might be able to just kite him out for the rest of the fight, but I think we're going to kill a couple more worms here. Let's see. Who's in the mood to die? Let's work them all down, and then we'll hopefully get him near one of them on the outskirts. Ooh, that was one that's really low somewhere. And uh, let me say that if you guys, you know, if you do die in this fight, don't don't get discouraged. I mean, you know, it's not like I just woke up today and was like, hey, I think I'm going to make a video on how to shit on Master G and do it on my first try. Like, it, you know, fights they'll, they'll might take more than one attempt sometimes. You know, not everything is just a straight walk in the park. So if you do take 
You know, if you don't kill him on your very first try, don't feel bad, guys, because it is an invincible boss, especially if you're trying to do it solo. I mean, you know, you can't expect to just shit on the boss every single time you do it. Sometimes it'll take more than one attempt. But we are starting to get into a bad situation. Apparently, we picked up one of the corrosive thingies. You can see that by our health ticking down. And we need to get G, come on, into the poison thing, G. Into the fucking thing, you pick it up. I think he's gonna pick it up here. This is really a race against time now. Oh boy. We're gonna full heal up here. Jesus, time to make our way to the purple bubble of awesomeness. You can see while we're uh, killing some of those Sam worms. I think G will bleed out before us. Let's see, we'll find out here. Yes, and he does! Victory! And apparently with the patch, the game does not freeze. Awesome! Oh, Shade is so creepy. So let's see what this baddie baddie dropped for us. Some Iridium, don't need that. What is this? Damn, fire, corrosive, and non-elemental resist. That's pretty sweet. Might think about getting one of those later. Let me see, homing merv. Damn, that is cool. I wonder what if it can... Hmm. It's like I can get one that has, like... I'll just hang on to it for now. Some Seraph Crystals. Yeah, kind of a kind of lackluster drop. I mean, that one element was... One relic was pretty sweet, but aside from that, we got some fucking crystals and a couple pieces of Iridium, and I think that's it. But what is this? Helios Flicker Kinetic Reflection. Hmm. I'll pick that up. Someone might want one of those. But anyway, guys, that's all there is to it. Master G the Invincible. Obviously, just, you know, a little bit of strategy, a little bit of timing, and he goes down. So, as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to rate the video, and make sure to check back for more Borderlands 2 videos as we begin to approach the uh, next wave of DLC. So, see you guys next time.